tonight we continue our series of stories from Papua New Guinea with part three, a look at women in politics. As in other Pacific Island countries, cultural and financial barriers make it difficult for women in Papua New Guinea to make inroads in politics. But PNG has set a national goal of promoting more representation of women in government, and there are people on the ground trying to advance that change. Dr. Norm Kelly is one of them. A former member of parliament in Australia, Kelly is now an associate at the Center for Democratic Institutions, a non-governmental organization based in Canberra. Kelly has helped train women candidates in the region since 2010, most recently conducting trainings in PNG in preparation for the 2012 election. We saw that there was a need here in Papua New, New Guinea, uh, following on from the 2007 election where there's only one woman elected to parliament, uh, and women themselves said that there's a need for greater candidate training. The AusAid funded workshops are conducted in collaboration with PNG's Office of Women's Development and offer intensive training in everything from public speaking to fundraising and organizing campaign supporters. Kelly describes the program as an ongoing process, which extends not only to increasing the number of women in parliament, but also to raising the level of women's input and influence in governance. It's been shown uh, time and again that you need a significant level of uh, women's representation. Um, a lot of people argue about 30% of the total at least. Their, their views, their perspectives can actually have a, a positive impact on um, how countries are governed. Lujaya Tony participated in one of Kelly's trainings and is the only woman in a field of 31 candidates running for office in the lay open electorate in Morobe province. The incumbent she's running against happens to be her grandfather, Bart Philemon, who's held the post for more than 20 years. Tony doesn't hold back in her criticism of her elder relative. Being a man, he's looked at big things. Oh yes, he's um, organized the economy. He knows where the money goes, where the money comes. He knows how to you know, grow the money, that kind of thing. But if you cannot put money back into your own people's pocket, you know, if you cannot improve the quality of life of people within the lay open electorate, then why should you again ask for another five years in office? Tony says it's been a difficult race and cites, among other things, her campaign's meager financial resources as one of her biggest challenges. She's optimistic, however, and describes how she tried to keep her supporters motivated throughout the campaign. What I said to them in Tok Pisin is this. I said to them, Sapos mi kai kai, you too by you kai kai. Na sapos mi no kai kai, you too by you no na kai kai. So they understood that. We're on the level because they know that, you know, when, when I win the seat, it's their victory. And I said, together we're all going to have running water, we're all going to have the joy to turn on the taps, we're all going to have the joy to turn on that electricity together, we're all going to have the joy to have that development rollout so that we all have decent housing. We don't have the money, but we do have the will and there is a way. East of Morobe and across the Bismarck Sea in New Ireland province, I learned of women trying to make a difference at a more local level. In La Rasulba, the chair of the village planning council is a woman, and there are other women in the village working to organize each other as a voting bloc. I met one of these women, Edelvin Malonga. The issues that the women are most concerned about are living standards, like uh, we want to, they want to have a good house, they want to have good water, uh, they want to have good toilets, and children must have uh, well uh, good eight eight uh, posts so that you know children can go to just nearby eight posts, and uh, you know women must have little uh, indoor projects so that they have a little you know income to support their household. We cannot waste our votes. Uh, well, say uh, voters benefit. Eh? If we vote. We must also benefit, eh? Thank you, Tina, for that. What an incredible experience for you. It really was amazing. Yeah, yeah I can just imagine some of the family feuds that must be starting with the different candidates being related. Oh, yeah, yeah. going after each other in, in a race. Yeah, and yeah. As, as I, I checked the election results on the PNG Election Commission's website, and uh, Lujai Tony's not doing too bad in the race. She's actually running fifth right now. The counting is still going on, um, and they probably won't wrap it up for at least another few days. So she's not too far behind her grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Must make it interesting at the dinner table. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can only imagine. Do we have more stories coming out of we Papua do. New Guinea from yeah, you? Yeah, I met okay. some pretty amazing people doing great work uh, with various non-governmental organizations. So I want to highlight that and also look at some of my favorite tourist spots in PNG. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tina.